Hello and welcome to UAT Time within the United Country special by First Ukraine. You can find us on the frequencies available on our website, first2a.com. I'm Sergei Vilichansky. And I am Olivier Vedrin. UAT Time is dedicated to bring Ukraine and Europe closer to each other by introducing the rail Ukraine to the rest of the world. France was one of the first countries which had implemented sanctions, sanctions on Russia as a reaction to Crimea annexation. And ever since, they participated in a variety of work groups of different levels in order to help reach peace in Ukraine and restore original borders control. Our guest today is Isabelle Dumont, the ambassador of France to Ukraine. Welcome. Thank Welcome. You. Bienvenue. <laughs> Thank you very much for finding time and uh, stopping by. Uh, since you, your country has been uh, so helpful in uh, especially recent couple of years, uh, we definitely have a lot of things to talk about. But before we touch on politics and uh, all the conflict issues, um, the French cultural events in Ukraine are still very popular. For example, the French Spring is highly anticipated each year. With all of the things that take place, will there still be events like this? Sure, there will be, and more than ever. Uh... Uh, there has been last year uh, 70,000 people going to different events organized in the French Spring. Uh, today, this year, it will be in, uh, in April again, uh, from the 2nd of April to the 30th of, uh, of April, the whole month. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be a huge event. I can tell you that all the embassy is already working on it, has been working on it uh, for several weeks and months. Uh, we are going to have a grand opening in Kiev uh, in a large street performance. I hope that many people are going to come, not only Kievians, but also maybe people from other cities, uh, to be with us. And there will be, uh, for example, a, a street art in Kiev, also in Dnipropetrovsk, uh, <coughs> theater performances, concerts, exhibitions, like every year. And this year, it's going to be my first time as, a, as ambassador, as I just started in, uh, in, in September in my uh, duty. And I can tell you I'm very enthusiastic of uh, having this uh, French Spring in two, three months. And what about other events you talk about, uh, we spoke about cinema? Also? Yeah, we're going to have lots of, uh, of cultural events uh, this year, as, again, as, a, as every year, and uh, I will do my b best to, to support it. Uh, starting now, in the coming days, we're going to have the, the French nights of the cinema, French cinema nights mm -hmm. in, in Uc all over Ukraine also, uh, from the 28th of January uh, to the 3rd of uh, mm -hmm. February. So it's really it's going, it's, uh, coming up now. Uh, in uh, in uh, Kiev, in Kharkiv, Odessa, Dnipropetrovsk, in Lviv, Vinitsa, Chernivtsi, Mariupol, Zaporozhye, and Zhitomir. So lot, lots of cities in Ukraine with uh, those specific nights of the French, uh, French cinema with uh, Jacques Audiard, Patrice Lecomte movies, Louis Garel, etc., etc., many French movies. So I, I really invite people to go you there. Talk, and, uh, you talk also see. about uh, f f f French Good, good France. Good of France is a, <laughs> good. Of, good of France is also a special event that's going to take place on the 21st of March, all over Ukraine. Uh, there is a sort of uh, of uh, word uh, play uh, with the name of the mm. event that is not only in Ukraine but all over the world in mm. all capitals and, and many many cities in the world. Uh, the name is Good of France, Taste of France, but. If you take the English sort of version, version it, it gives good France, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, nice France. Yeah. Yes. And and uh, in for this world event, all the French cooks are uh, organizing themselves to organize uh, dinners and lunch uh, in uh, in different uh, restaurants and cities. I'm going to host uh, a, a lunch, obviously. Mm -hmm. In Ukraine, we have, as for now, twelve restaurants have uh, that have submitted a request to organize a French lunch or dinner, so maybe others would like to, mm -hmm. to do so, but, uh, but this is uh, going to be a, a very nice event. We, we, we talked about culture, yes, and that's very interesting, but another part, here in Kiev, they are very proud about Andekiev. And um, 
uh, they want to know if in France uh, also we know this part of the history with Ukraine. You're and talking about and of Kiev. And the Kiev, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. In France and the Kiev. It's, it's like you're speaking English, but you're using the yeah, French. The, the French, the French and, the the, Kiev. and the Kiev. It's Anna and from Kiev, Anna and of Kiev. Of Kiev. Kiev. Yeah. Kiev. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, before talking to about under Kiev, I just wanted to, if you if you allow me, to to talk about a, another very important cultural event that is going to be the Francophonie, the Week of oh, the Francophonie. Yeah. Uh, that is going to take place from, from the 12th uh, to the 13th of March, which uh, also is very, a very important event all over the world, but specifically in, in, uh, in Ukraine. And I know that Ukrainians are waiting for that. Uh, and we are going to, to organize specifically a video, um, a concours video mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, in, in Ukraine. And one of the prices uh, of, these, uh, of this will be uh, to go to France. So all, again, I invite people. And I just wanted to show uh, the, this is the program of the French Institute. Uh, with lots and lots of events we touched upon just a few of them but this is all the events that are going to take place in uh, in 2016 please go on the website of Perfect. the french embassy and the french institute you will have all they're, the they're, they are very dynamic and a lot lot of events a lot of events with the french institute yeah. that's good actually i i have some connection with some of uh, representatives of uh, french culture back there but well uh, not necessarily french culture because it's global uh, but a French representative from that culture. I'm talking about breakdance. We mm -hmm. had, about 10 years ago, we had one representative from a, a breakdance scene from France uh, travel here uh -huh. and performing, and it, he's still one of the top in the world. And so. you performed with him? No, I, I produced it, so <laughs> I just managed him to come here. It was quite a challenge as well, I'll, I'll tell you. But. But anyway, uh, there is yeah, there is a lot of interesting things. Yes, and uh, uh, then we talk about culture. Francophonie is very, uh, very important for France, and uh, you know that even in Ukraine, uh, you have a lot of uh, university where you can uh, uh, learn French. I in know, Ukraine, a lot. I know, and you know, I've been visiting uh, again. I've been here only for for four months, but I've already been been visiting some uh, some cities here in Ukraine. And uh, you cannot imagine, as an ambassador of France, how important, how deep feeling I get when I go to universities and schools, uh, visiting schools in, like, for example, in Mariupol, where I went uh, at the very beginning after I came here. And, and you have those kids, uh, 10 years old, 12 years old who speak French to you as, as French people hmm. uh, with a slight accent, mm -hmm. but you know, and it's incredible. And you have those, this, they want France, they want, they want some, some piece of France. Mm. And in, indeed, there, there are a lot of people in, in Ukraine who, who really love France, so I want to support that. Then I want to come back to the question about the sure. history. Yes, it's and historical connections. Yeah, because maybe, the, 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 of, yes, the Ukrainian people, they, they really love France, but maybe because of this common history and because of Anne de Kiev, um, maybe you can talk about. Sure, uh, Anne de Kiev, as we say in, fr in French, uh, Anne, <laughs> Anne, of, Anne of Kiev, uh, she, uh, she uh, was a princess uh, in the 11th century, but I know most uh, Ukrainians know that, less French people uh, probably, but she was married to Henri I, uh, Henry I. And she was the mother of Philippe, uh, so that's about 10 centuries ago. Uh, and she actually happened to be the queen of France because uh, he's when Henri I died in uh, 1060. Mm. Uh, the, the future king was too small and she happened mm -hmm. to, to be the mother queen and, and uh, to, to be at the head of, of the French state for, for quite a while. So we have this very important historical link between Ukraine and France. And then you have many other examples as Honoré de Balzac, a huge French uh, author, uh, writer, who uh, married uh, uh, a lady in, uh, in Ukraine uh, in, uh, next to Jitomir. 
uh, in Ukraine. So we have those cultural historical links that are really profound and that we can work on to continue uh, cooperating together. Plus, in, in, in many ways, uh, you know, uh, Ukraine is quite agricultural. Uh, mm. in some ways friends as well so there is a lot of uh, similarities even in mentality exactly and yeah. issues like that. and I want also to add something you have also this uh, big uh, big big uh, person in Ukraine the historical person the Philippe Orlik mm -hmm. uh, who, uh, who went to France Philippe Orlik the famous Philippe Orlik who uh, wrote the first constitution of Ukraine right. and the first constitution of Europe yeah, yeah, we have. He went to France. And, and coming back to agriculture, as you mentioned it, uh, this is one of the main fields of cooperation between, uh, between us. Can, mm -hmm. can you believe it? In the French embassy, I have an agriculture attaché, mm. someone specific who comes from the Ministry of Agriculture of France and who is really good helping Ukrainian government and helping cooper to develop cooperation in the agriculture field, which is very important. All right. Well, in the recent couple of years with the um, <coughs> conflict uh, in the east of Ukraine and with the Crimea annexation, have our relationships uh, are any, you know, have uh, been subject to change in for better or for, uh, or what, how would you describe our relationships right now because of this conflict? What I can tell you is that uh, in my career as a diplomat, uh, as a French civil servant in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, I've never seen such an involvement of the French authorities to support a country in my personal career. Uh, I was, just bef before being appointed as ambassador to Ukraine, I was in the French Foreign Ministry in Paris dealing with a crisis. Uh, so I've been following the whole thing and working on the, on the, on the, on the Ukraine crisis since the, the beginning. And I can tell you the involvement of the French president, of the French foreign minister, minister are huge. Uh, and this is something those ties already, unfortunately, for two years, show to what extent France is a real friend of Ukraine. And I... I, I... I have the information that the President François Hollande, for the President, President François Hollande, uh, the Ukraine is um, a priority field. Yeah, he said it actually. Yeah. You, you mm. might have heard it yesterday, mm. yeah. uh, some, some days ago, when he, sp he spoke uh, to, as, mm. you know, it, for the New Year. Mm -hmm. And he indeed, uh, he indeed uh, said that uh, Ukraine is, is going to remain a priority. And yeah. it is very clear. Yeah. He's made a few uh, quite uh, strong, well, suggestions uh, sound quite strong because it states uh, in uh, some of the media that uh, uh, Mr. Holland urges Ukraine to adopt constitutional changes in line with Minsk uh, agreements. <clears throat> and so he's um, pretty much uh, insisting to go this path, uh, which as far as we understand, our president, Petro Poroshenko, has never refused to go, and he's doing his yeah. best to follow. But um, I want to maybe, in, again, in, uh, in uh, one of your uh, 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 speeches, uh, you stated that constitutional reform, especially in the part of decentralization, uh, is a defining one uh, to connect the future of Ukraine with Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, would you please uh, give a little more on that? Because decentralization issue, especially in the area of special status mm -hmm. for the so-called, you know, for, the, for those little territories which are now being occupied, that's a very sensitive and very touchy issue right now. It is, yeah. It is, we, we know that, obviously. That's part of the Minsk agreements, uh, decentralization, the, the, the famous package uh, of measures, uh, how it is called. Uh, called. We, uh, first, I really want to remind that France is here to support Ukraine with Germany, hand in hand. Uh, we are, France and Germany, the famous 
couple, as we as we uh, as we as we call it, with, uh, within the European Union, mm -hmm. this this uh, this Franco-German couple has uh, has been here to support Ukraine since the beginning of the of the conflict and uh, and the r Russian aggression towards Ukraine. Uh, the decentralization that is. Uh, being organized little by little and to, for which we are providing quite a lot of support mm -hmm. uh, to, to Ukraine because you cannot just do it like that. I mean, mm -hmm. this is a lot of work. This is about training people uh, who are going to do the job in, uh, in municipalities and also in the capital uh, city. Uh, so this is this is part of the Minsk uh, of the Minsk package. So that's why we really want helping Ukraine to support, as, as and as you said, President Poroshenko and and uh, Ukrainian uh, authorities are want to implement the Minsk package. There is no doubt about it. On decentralization uh, in France and in many other countries, but in France we did it in uh, 1982. Mm -hmm. yes. It was, it, I mean, we started to do it uh, in 1982. Mm -hmm. This is a long process. This okay. is something you don't do, do in one year. This is something you have to prepare, decide, and then build upon. Mm -hmm. And this is, even now, there are discussions in France, even now, 30 years later, there are discussions mm -hmm. about how to organize decentralization. Okay. We, just, <coughs> we just changed our regions, for example, in France. We just changed the number of regions, mm -hmm. what we call the région. There was a change just one month ago, two months ago. So this is not an easy task, and everybody knows that in, in France, I can assure you. Uh, on this, on, we understand how touchy it is okay. for Ukraine, but we're here to support Ukraine to help implementing it. Well, at least there are some mistakes that we can learn from. You know, if you, in the 30 years Maybe. of... Probably, the process yeah. and it's not least. only France. It's and and I ask you ask, as you ask the question about the link with Europe. The yeah. only thing I I meant and I mean is um, if you look at the recent history of m most states in, uh, in in Europe, most of them are decentralized. Mm -hmm. Most of them are mm -hmm. decentralized. So what we did in France in eighty two <coughs> has been done in other in other countries of in Europe. And this is probably the way to give citizens a hold on their future. That's that's the idea, and that's something we, which Ukrainians first of all want. That's what I yes. hear also yes. when I go to when I visit cities in Ukraine. That that's something I, I hear. People want to have a hold on their future. But unfortunately, this good process of decentralization is connected to this. Yeah touchy issue yeah. of special status mm -hmm. because in, in some way you know in the Minsk agreements there are some conditions that not only the special status first of all it's temporary for three years uh, but secondly it, uh, it it has to come along in the package with the securing the border again mm -hmm. and then elections under the Ukrainian and international laws so it's th th that's where you know I think why Minsk agreements, you know, move so slowly the implementations, because uh, from one side, this you know ceasefire has to have been in place since I think what February, February yeah. last year, mm -hmm. but even like yesterday there was seven sixty nine shelling mm -hmm. of our positions again, and so now we are back to where we started. It's not back to where you, you were. You, you have to remember, and we tend to forget, people t tend to forget, but you, we have to remember what was the situation in August 2014, mm -hmm. in January 2015. Yes. Remember those, those moments where dozens of people were dying yes. uh, each day. So yes. that, was, that was a horrible period. I remember I was in Paris yes. and I was terrified. You know, We had to find a solution for those people not to die anymore. So that, that was the situation where we were, and also with troops going into the territory. So that's the Minsk agreement in the, on the 12th of February helped really stop it. And now sure. I agree, totally agree with you. We still have too many people killed, too many violations of ceasefire, that's for sure. But we are in a new phase where the, the, 
the, we have less losses of, of life. But now we have conti to continue to, build, uh, to yeah. build on that. And this is what we are trying to do. But I agree. I mean, first thing to do is obviously having security. Security is, is, is a starter. And, and then and you have to build the other things uh, together. But political, uh, political issues have to be dealt with also. This is really something to, you know, to keep, uh, to keep a, a link with, uh, with this re region, I think, is, is really essential. Yes, and maybe we can talk about the, this visit of uh, those two uh, French and German uh, diplomatic advisors at the beginning of this week. And uh, can you speak more about that? Give, give to us some information, if, if you can. Well, what I can tell you is that there was indeed uh, uh, the mid-January, mid the, the visit of, uh, of uh, Jacques Audibert and uh, Christophe Reusgen, mm. uh, the diplomatic advisor of the president, of the French president, and of the German uh, chancellor. This is an important uh, visit to the extent that it shows how the president and the chancellor are really deep into the matter, sending, if I may say so, their closest advisors, mm -hmm. counselors to Ukraine to see from themselves and see where we are, feel where we are here, uh, feel the difficulties also of, of mm. the gov government, of the president, understand where they are and how we can help implementing uh, the Minsk agreement. So that was, that was the idea. They uh, had a, a meeting with the president, with the prime minister, with many, many people. They stayed nearly 24 hours, which is uh, quite a long time, and yeah. which allowed them to have lots of, uh, of contacts. And um, so we will obviously continue working, mm -hmm. uh, uh, working on it. But there, this visit uh, aimed at uh, understanding better exactly where we are and how we can help in the future weeks. Mm -hmm. It, it might be interesting for you that uh, as a result of the meeting, the deputy chair of the Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine Committee on European Integration, Maria Ionova, stated that for us, the main topic of discussion was not the Minsk agreements as such, but rather one party's failure to comply with them. We talked more about the Russian Federation being the non-compliant party, and they, we, we talked about the OSCE observation mission and the hindrances of their work and so forth. So that was the side from the, from the Ukrainian representative. Yeah. Um, we, we talk a lot about politics. Maybe, maybe we can talk also about uh, French business in Ukraine. Yes, let's do it because we have yeah. uh, three minutes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> three minutes left. But, uh, we have a lot of French company French, in Ukraine. Yes. Yeah, what we, about have, that? we have about uh, 160 comp French companies, which is a good number. And we have small companies, bigger companies, and I want to say that French is also a very important uh, investor in uh, in Ukraine, uh, 1.6 billion dollars, which is um, already quite quite important. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, we are going to organize a, probably in the spring. Uh, it's being confirmed now. A business forum in Paris. You might remember that we were going to organize a business forum on the 18th of November, and that we had to cancel yeah. and yeah. report because okay. of the because of the, uh, the attacks attack, yeah. in, uh, in on the 13th of November in Paris. But so now we are working again on it, and it's going to be a very important event with the Prime Minister coming to to Paris and a, a mix of political and uh, business uh, meetings. So this is, uh, we are the whole embassy uh, and, and, uh, and the whole system is working on it. And we have lots of uh, energy of uh, French business working in Ukraine. How, uh, uh, seriously, because of a shortage of time, but I can't, uh, I can't uh, avoid touch, touching this issue. Euro 2016 in, in France. France because, will win, obviously. <laughs> yes. Well, um, uh, we'll definitely cheer for that, but uh, we know that the Ukrainian team is participating. Yep. So we're hoping to at least yeah. get out of sure. the yeah. group uh, contests uh, and yeah. competitions. Um, but how are your preparations going all, uh, alone? And I'm, and I'm meaning the security as well mm -hmm. and uh, just in general. And another question would be probably the uh, ability of uh, Ukrainian fans to travel 
Yeah. yeah. This... Will there be a special? We will definitely do our best to help. I can tell you, I'm the biggest fan of the Ukrainian team. I really want the Ukrainian team to to be a, to have a success in France. I mean. You can guess. For me as ambassador, I, yes. I would be so happy. Obviously, I want the French team to, to, that, to well, go very far, but it would be a great success for me, in a way, if Ukraine go, goes far in the, in the contest. So yes. I would be really happy. And we will obviously do all our best to, to help uh, supporters go to, go to France. Mm -hmm. As of uh, concerning the, the security in, in France, you can, you can guess that everybody, mm. every, everything is being done to ensure uh, security. And I, I'm sure it's, it will be fine. Sergey, we have a few minutes to talk about the visa for our Ukrainian friends, about the visa, poli the mm -hmm. police of the visa. A few words about that, please, because a lot of persons want to know more. Well, I, want, I can tell you that uh, now we are delivering quite a lot of visas. Uh, we delivered 33,000 visas in 2015. And now I, I know that many things are going on concerning the barrelization of visa. I have to say, I, I mean, negotiations are just starting, obviously. So it's, we're just in January. Mm -hmm. It's the beginning of, of, a, of a process that is probably going to take some time. Uh, member states have to decide to see what are the risks, what are the possibilities. But uh, in, in any case, uh, the visa-free regime, when there will be one, is going to be, as far as I understand, only for biometric passports. Mm -hmm. so, so that's going to be for people having biometric pa passports. Okay. That's an important point for people to know. So that's important because they are waiting for one. Mm -hmm. Well, little by little, little, uh, by little you know, step systematic by step. changes can't take place overnight. Yeah, and it's uh, it's good. We're step working by step. together. And uh, thank you very much for thank stopping you. by. Merci thank beaucoup. you for finding Merci. time to Merci à vous. Uh, to visit with us. It was United Country UAT time by First Ukraine. Our guest was Isabel Dumont, the ambassador of France to Ukraine. Olivier Vedrin and Sergei Velichansky were working for you in the studio. Stay with us and we'll show to you the real Ukraine. Thank you for being with us. Have a good day and see you soon.